Hey everyone, Anders here. I'm back with another Black Desert video. Today we're going to go over the new region update information from the latest developer commentary video for the release of the new continent, Land of the Morning Light. The new expansion will be releasing June 14th to all regions on PC. There's a lot to go over, so let's start with Wusa Awakening and Megu Awakening, which were also showcased in the same developer video. With Wusa Awakening, they showed off the combat trailer and they spoke about the motif and theme of the class. Frankly, the showcase makes the class look slow, but like Succession Wusa, the larger AoE and burst movement could mean she is an S-tier grinder like Succession Wusa. For PvP, they talked about some concepts Concepts I don't think will work in a live setting, maybe like a dueling setting, things like Sochon Field. This is a skill that acts like a trap. You lay down these mines that look really cool, deal damage when the enemy steps on them. The range is good as well, but the cast either needs to be protected or the skill itself needs to deal a lot of damage. And that leads to the main issue about teasers like this. The problem with developer showcases is that we get kind of a visual sense of what skills look like but we don't know if they have protection icons. They obviously lack tooltips as well. We need more information to see how exactly the class will function, what skills will do, and what are the damage modifiers. All these things that go into knowing if a skill is good or bad. They did show a skill that allows you to mark enemies and then cast a skill that will follow your target to deal damage. That seems pretty strong, but again, we need more information. But luckily this Monday, Global Labs will have a patch that should allow us to test the class before release. So Come Monday, I'm going to have a lot more to say on what Wusa Awakening looks like and how it's going to do on release. For now, I'd say visually the class looks great, but I can understand those saying she looks slow. Remember though, slow class does not mean a bad class. Megu Awakening was also shown, though no full combat trailer like the Wusa Awakening. They said they're still finishing up Megu Awakening and her skills. We got to see a melee skill and found out she will be more melee focused with smaller AoEs that debuff enemies. We also know Megu Awakening will be releasing in the month of June, but no date for it yet. I would expect to see it at the end of June, more than likely. So that was all for the Awakenings. They both look great. I'm excited to be able to test them out and see what they can do, but we did get a lot more information about the new expansion coming to the game June 14th in this developer commentary, so let's jump into that. The main content for the new expansion will be based around a boss rush mode called Black Desert Boss Blitz. This mode is called the Black Shrine in Korea, a name I honestly prefer over Boss Blitz, but it is what it is. Is. I think they called it Black Desert Boss Blitz because of Maple Story, another Korean game really popular in Korea that has a boss blitz mode but who knows. I made a video overview on what this new mode is all about and what the rewards look like, but we did get a surprise announcement with the introduction of a brand new boss, Imogi. This new boss will release at the same time as a global release for Land of the Morning Light. With the addition of Imogi, we now have 10 bosses to fight, but it is unclear if the limit of 5 clears a week will remain. Each boss is going to have 10 calamity levels or difficulties with each increasing level adding more attacks to the fight. Currently in Korea, we have 7 of 10 Calamity levels, with no plans to add more difficulties as the developers want to wait for more players to clear as levels 6 and 7, before introducing harder difficulties. We will most likely have Calamity levels 1 through 5 at launch for us in Global. Level 5 will be especially difficult for you in the first week until you learn the fight as the boss damage output is very high. Your gear is going to amount to 10% of your overall damage with 90% coming from these items called light orbs. You're going to get some of these as you progress through the main story. What these light orbs do is allow you to increase your AP and DP for elemental types. Each boss will have an element assigned to them so you can allocate your light orbs to the correct element to be able to fight those bosses. The way rewards work in this boss blitz mode is based on individual class rank times. Every day you will be able to see how your clear time stacks up against other players using the same class as you. Succession and Awakening are still in the same category, so if you play Awakening Sage, you will compete against other Awakening Sage players and Succession Sage players. At the end of the week, times will be reset and rewards handed out depending on your final ranking. The higher the ranking, the more rewards you get. There are three tiers of rewards, Rank 1, Rank 3, and Rank 10. The difference between Rank 10 bundles and the Rank 1 bundles are significant, so if you want to min-max your rewards and try to obtain the new rare items faster, you will want to try for the best times. Debaraka earrings are being introduced with 
this new region. At Pen, they have 19 AP, 12 accuracy, and an all AP plus 12 double record 3 set effect on them. To craft this item, you will need a Jewel of Illusion, two red shards, and two black shard seals. Jewel of Illusion can be obtained at a low chance from boss blitz reward bundles. New crystals are also being added. You will gain two additional crystal slots for free through the main story. The new life crystals will need to be crafted using materials from the new region. You will get two free of your choice that can be sold on the market. They currently sell for 500 million silver each in Korea. You will also be able to obtain new legendary crystals from the boss blitz reward bundles. These are powerful crystals that can only be placed once per preset. There are three tiers of this crystal that allow you to combine three of the smaller tiers to make the next tier and so on. Don's Gloves, the next Fallen God armor has been confirmed to release with this region. I have a video going over how to obtain these on the channel. You will have the option to choose a DR version or an evasion version of this item. Both Pen Lieber and Pen Begs at Kafras level 10 will work for the usual transformation to Fallen God pieces. You will be able to exchange each version for the other for a price if you wish to change your build down the road. To obtain the Flame of Hongik and the Embers of Hongik needed for this new armor, you will need to do Boss Blitz. Depending on the rank reward, you will obtain a certain amount of Embers of Hongik every week. You can also craft a Flame by using 250 Crystallized Despair obtained easily in Elvia Calfian, so you can prep for that before the release of Land on Morning Light. There will also be a Kafras Extraction event when the new region releases. Bosses in the new region will now drop new accessories as well. With the Tebek Belt, you will be granted Blessing of Tebek as a skill. This skill has a cooldown of 10 minutes and will envelop you with a protected buff. The buff power depends on the enhancement level of the item. At Pen, the skill will grant you a 30 AP buff for 60 seconds and a 50 DP buff for 60 seconds. Moving on to housing, there are no new houses as we expect them to be in this new region. Instead, we get two new mansions or manors as we know them. One is an elaborate mansion and one is a more cozy cabin type mansion. It will work similarly to the manor we have already in the game in Serendia. There will also be a new Land of the Morning Light exclusive furniture added as well. These mansions will also have the new Merchant Summon function added to them, only for Land of the Morning Light mansions. You will be able to consume some energy to summon three vendors from the nearby town to buy supplies like cooking materials and general goods. There is a new warship that can be crafted with a new region called Panoxon. This ship seems to be fairly versatile but weaker than a typical Carrick. You will need materials found in the new region and then bought with sea coins, so if you already own a Carrick, you'll have an easier time crafting the new ship. You will need to do around two weeks of dailies once the new Land of the Morning Light comes out and then have 100,000 sea coins to buy the materials you need to craft a ship. Through the store, you will be able to choose a life skill approach. This will unlock a special knowledge called Green Thumb once you're artisan level. This then unlocks a skill called Green Artisan for your character. If you gather with this function active, there is a chance that a minigame will appear. Lumbering, hoe gathering, butchering, mining, tanning, and fluid collecting all have their own unique minigames. If you complete the minigames, you will be able to obtain a larger quantity of items while consuming more energy. This should accelerate the gathering process, but there is now a rare item that can only be obtained through this new method of gathering called the Millennial Wild Ginseng. This gives you a 90-day buff for your account and can be sold on the market. I have a complete guide on this green artisan function on the channel if you wish to know more. With this new region, we get three new worker types, the Dokebi, Human, and Turtle workers. Dokebi are similar to the Goblin type, but can work on special nodes in this new region. Turtles are like giants, and humans are, well, just humans. I'll have a complete note breakdown and worker breakdown as we get closer to the release of the new region. Marnie's sniper rifle will also be released. Sniper hunting in this new region is one of the main sources of income for life skillers and one of the best ways to obtain the materials necessary for the life skill crystal. I'll have a complete guide for sniper hunting in Land of Morning Light as we get closer to release. That's all I have for you right now. As someone who's been playing this new region for the past few months, I can say it is the best region Perlobis has released to date. Global is getting a much improved version i think that will also help those who enjoy the story but also help those that frankly don't care about the lore or the story and just don't like unskippable cutscenes well guess what you can now skip more cutscenes with this updated version of the region and fast forward through unskippable cutscenes to get you through the content faster let me know what you thought about the awakenings and the land of morning light news only a few more weeks for the region but less than a week for wusa awakening stay tuned on the channel for more class guides and new region breakdowns and as always thanks for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care